it's uh, time for Ken to talk to us now. So Ken, absolute expert on Morris <laughs> and his legacy. So Ken, uh, I know that you are a, a fantastic talker. You've always got lots to say. Uh, but your five minutes starts now. <laughs> Tell me when to stop. I will. I'm going to go like that. Yeah. Go like does that. anybody? Okay, so nice. Does anybody know a good hairdresser? No. <laughs> <laughs> what yeah, can we say about Morris? Darfield's answer to Noel Coward. <laughs> we were born in 1912, a bit before my time. <laughs> I remember him coming to, back to Darfield after his uh, being in the service as in the army and in, uh, in uh, working in hotels as a waiter on the south coast, big hotels, Torquay, Paynton and latterly in uh, Filey. He came back when he, he, he gained the tenancy of, uh, uh, of the local uh, off-licence, 1956. I was a young lad then, and uh, Darfield Empire, the, the, the local picture place, were across the road, uh, which closed on the 30th of December 1956. And we'd, we'd go to the pictures and call in the shop for uh, ice cream or a Coca Cola. And the tennis club again were across the road from the museum, and we did the same. And Morris, nice fella, except he, he, he were a bit sharp. You've got to be very careful. <laughs> he, he, dealt with his, he dealt with the problems because he did have one or two minor problems, but he dealt with them. He was a boxer in the army. He'd done 19 years in the forces, so he could handle himself. The police station were only three doors away. And he never bothered the police. He dealt with it. Now, you could fall out with Morris in the shop, but Fred, he was a different kettle of fish altogether. What a lovely man Fred was. Uh, even, when, uh, even when Fred passed on in 1988, Morris kept his uh, ashes on the mantelpiece and he fell out with them. <laughs> So he'd put him in a cupboard underneath mm -hmm. until he fell back in with him and then he'd put him back on there. <laughs> They're both now, uh, uh, Morris passed on in 1990. And uh, both the rashes are now scattered in Darfield Churchyard. And we are raising funds just now mm -hmm. to have a, a memorial headstone erected close by where we know they are, to commemorate uh, both Morris and Fred. So we, 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 he, he, the museum, it's the oldest residential property in Darfield, where Morris and uh, Fred lived. They were able to purchase it in 1971 for £900. Beautiful property. Uh, <laughs> But when we took over 1994, it were derelict. It had been empty for four years. Uh, and it were all concrete rendered. It were painted black and white. Everything were wrong about the place. Uh, but Geoffrey Hutchinson and six more chaps set about it and uh, produced a, a beautiful museum. I think it's the best small museum in England. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I, I'm the guide there if uh, if anybody comes. And if you remember, I, I read you the poem, it was my hundredth poem. Ken, can I ask uh, you something? Yeah. Yeah, so thank you very much for that. What do you think, what would Morris and Fred think to the museum now? What would be their uh, their reaction to it? Would they be favourable, do you think? Fred, Fred, Fred wouldn't be, Fred would be 50 50. Mm. But Morris, he would be delighted. Mm. It, it, it's exactly what Morris wanted. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, that... there is the Morris Dobson room where Morris's artifacts 
fill it. And that's the first room after the shop, that's the first room that you go into. The room is upstairs. So I think Fred would be excited as well. But Fred, a lovely man, he was very quiet, kept himself to himself. Uh, and, and, and so you don't know really what Fred would be thinking. But it'd be nice thoughts, I'm sure. <laughs>